Hey everyone, so we've got a pretty amazing breakthrough in terms of AI character acting. This one is building off the recent leaps that we've seen in terms of lip syncing for AI avatars, uh, like in Emotalker, uh, Vasa, or more widely with Hedra. Although what I'm going to show you today is really going to blow you away. Plus, relighting has hit creative upscaling. The results, in my opinion, are still a bit on the exploratory side, but they are super fun and awesome. I'll show you two places where you can run some relighting, one of which is free. Okay, let's dive in. First up, we have a new approach to AI character expression, although it is still sort of stuck in that AI avatar box, but not for long. This is Live Portrait from Kwaishu Technology. And yes, that is the same company that brought us the AI video generator, Kling. As a quick aside, having done a tutorial on Kling a few videos ago, I know a number of you are still having trouble getting access to it. Uh, I am hopeful that I'll have something for you later this week. At least in the meantime, you can use Live Portrait now. I'll talk more about that in just a minute. Now, what separates Live Portrait from all of those other AI video avatar generators is the fact that this one is driven by input video. What we've seen thus far from Emotalker, Vasa, and even Hedra is that, you know, you begin with a 1-1 one -one character portrait, provide it with reference audio, and then you'll get a talking animation out of that. Whereas Live Portrait, yeah, uh, well, let's take a look at some examples. Utilizing a webcam, make it rad one over on the left, at least I presume that's the real person on the left. If not, then I read that paper completely wrong, uh, is driving, uh, I guess those are, I presume that those are mid-journey generated images uh, run through Live Portrait. Portrait. And as you can see, we're getting a level of like facial control and animation acting really uh, that we have not seen up until this point. From Gradient, we get an expression of Vincent Vega and Jules from Pulp Fiction, uh, both making the same face that my dog makes when it eats too much cheese. One of my favorite examples comes to us via proper prompter, who did not pick a pair of pickled peppers. Nailed it. Uh, yeah, on the right, we have Dwight. Dwight? Seven takes of proper prompter and I screw up Dwight. I am just leaving that in. Uh, on the right, we have Dwight Schrute and on the left, obviously a claymation kind of Pixar version of Jon Snow. Overall, I do think that live portrait really does kind of fly with animated type characters, although there are some limitations. Justine Moore ran this test, which I think is really impressive. The animated character on the right is very much tracking along with a lot of different expressions. That said, in terms of limitations, live portrait is pretty much looking at, you know, facial expressions, not necessarily head movements. So because this character was generated with her head kind of, you know, tilted to one side, it's she's pretty much going to be locked to that. That said, it still does do a pretty good job as multimodal art shows us with Jensen Heisenberg. Say my name. If you like that, I've got some insane cinematic stuff coming up in just a second. Briefly, in terms of how all of this works, uh, Live Portrait utilizes stitching and retargeting modules as well as landmark guided key point optimization. I know that's a mouthful, but the stitching and retargeting essentially allows for more detailed animations, whereas the landmark guided key point optimization uh, kind of gives 2D landmarks to facial features. So essentially the model knows where, you know, your eyes and your mouth are. So combining those two, you end up with a model that is not only faster, but more accurate than, you know, something like Emotalker. The key point optimization is something that you're going to want to be aware of when you start playing with this thing, which, you know, you can right now because it's not only over on Replicate, but it's on Hugging Face as well. The Hugging Face demo is super easy to use. Uh, you just upload an image here. So I'm just going to grab my you know, standard kind of profile picture, throw that in there. Uh, there's some templates down here. You can also provide it with video if you would like. We're gonna talk about that because there is kind of a thing about that. So uh, I'm just gonna use the demo guy. He's, uh, yeah, it's the video that we previously saw in the Pulp Fiction example of my dog cutting the cheese. Hit the animate button and after a few minutes you have me doing this. Well, I don't know what you smell, it wasn't me. Now, if you're running into issues with your character expression, uh, one of the things you can do is come up and retarget. So uh, we'll drop an image into here and then you'll see up here we have sliders for targets uh, eyes open and target lip open or mouth open. Um, you can move these sliders a bit. So they recommend just cranking it both all the way up to 0.8 to see where things are. Uh, we'll hit retarget. Things are gonna get weird here in a second. 
Now, cranked up to 0.8, I turn into a skippity toilet meme. Yes, I know skippity toilet. If you have children that are around my kid's age, you know skippity toilet as well. So you're definitely gonna wanna experiment around a little bit. Uh, I found that you know 0.3 and 0.31 seem to work okay-ish for me. Uh, at this point, I would download this image and then re-import that as my initial image. Popping in from the edit, one thing that I did forget to mention is that you will probably want to use static lockdown shots without camera movement. As you can see, when we do have camera movement here, my, my head starts kind of you know turning into like an inflatable balloon. But what's really exciting about Live Portrait is the fact that we have code to it and people are already starting to play around with it in like Comfy as AI Warper did here, taking Bella Porch and you know turning her into the Joker. But what's really exciting about Live Portrait is the fact that what we have seen up until now has been image to video. It can also do video to video, although that has not been released yet. That said, Stealthy the Time Traveler has apparently managed to crack it in the code. It's unclear what the method he used is, but yeah, check this out. This is test uh, number one, two, and three. Hmm. And this is test uh, number four, five, and six. And uh, this one is a longer video to show you eyes, mouth, head. Bye. That's pretty insane. There are like a handful of tells here and there. Like I did notice in the Bradley Cooper shot at one point, like he kind of loses his teeth a bit there. But the Russell Crowe gladiator segment, I mean, just looking at that, I would probably think that that was, you know, from a blooper or an outtake. And again, to note, this actually isn't the official release. Uh, this is just something that Stealthy figured out by reverse engineering. So I will definitely let you know when we do get an official release on video to video or Stealthy reveals his method. Either way, this is a really big step forward for AI filmmaking. I mean, between this and Eleven Labs speech to speech, I mean, I don't know, maybe it is a good time to enroll in those local acting classes. Next up, we have creative image relighting. This was first introduced by Magnific uh, about a week ago, I would say. And listen, I know I can already hear like half of you yelling, Magnific is too expensive. Uh, I do have a free option for you coming up in just a minute. But basically the way that this works is that you can provide it with an image and then provide it with another reference image and then have it relight and even change the background to your reference image. It does have some limitations, and I'm not going to lie, it definitely hiccups here and there. We'll go over that in just one second. But I mean, overall, it's a really cool way of dramatically changing the tone of one of your generations. Now, the way that this works is that you'll come up to the Relight tab, uh, upload an input image, and then you can either choose to upload a reference image or you can use just a prompt. Uh, in this case, we grabbed another princess image and running that, you have options to change the light transfer strength uh, and then some advanced settings uh, in terms of the whites, the blacks, the brightness, etc. cetera. Uh, that stuff that I, I only really kind of play with here and there only because you can very quickly get lost in the woods. So running this image, we end up with this, which I, I mean, it definitely captured the light from our reference image. Thus far, I've kind of found that the initial output always kind of looks a little bit on the grainy side. Uh, luckily, you're already in Magnific, so you can just run a standard creative upscale from there. I ended up doing that with this image um, and ended up with this result. Uh, not a huge fan of necessarily how it came out initially. I did like the overall you know, colors and relighting aspect, but I did find her face to be a little on the cartoony side. So uh, you know, I just ended up running a standard Magnific upscale. And from there, I ended up with this, which definitely leans much more photorealistic. Now, in terms of limitations, I have found that when you use real people, People. For example, uh, this is a photo of me that I clearly used at one point or another for a thumbnail. Um, giving it a text prompt of me in a coffee shop in a rainforest, uh, it does have the tendency to change the person. Uh, the background looks really good and everything, but uh, you know, obviously it may be younger, thank you. Uh, and I don't know, kind of gave me like a James Franco expression. Now, if you want to try this technique out and you, you don't subscribe to Magnific, you can try it out, at least a similar version of it uh, over on Krea, which is free. Uh, to get to that, you just simply come over to the upscale in enhance 
tab. In Korea, their version of it is called scene transfer. Um, so you'll just make sure to have that active. Um, so just hit the active there. Uh, I provided it with an image of like a cyberpunk woman, I think uh, illustrated -y kind of style. As always, uh, Kriya will actually automatically create a scene prompt for you. Uh, hit the enhance button and then, you know, you'll end up with uh, essentially a relit, retextured version of your image. And by the way, in case you missed it, Kriya also has a video upscale enhancer. I think they're the only ones that I know of um, that have this feature. So uh, I did a whole video about that. It is linked down below. I highly recommend you try it out. So yeah, a lot of interesting stuff coming down the pike. We are definitely in like a creative AI growth spurt right now. Doing my best to stay on top of it and bring it to you. In the meantime, I thank you for watching. My name is Tim.